In this recording, we're going to discuss how to properly do periodontal charting in EagleSoft. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're in your correct patient's file. At this point, though, in your appointment at TJC, you will have already um, checked in your patient with the proper SMART documents, um, the HIPAA form, informed consent, currently the COVID form, and their medical dental history. You will have had your patient check-in auto note um, placed in the note history, and you will have had permission from your professor to begin. You will either begin with your dental assessments beginning with x-rays or your periodontal assessment after your calculus classification has been done. So let's say you're going to start with perio. The first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that you have removed all the teeth that this patient has missing from their dental chart. So we're going to say that this patient is missing all four wisdom teeth as well as their second premolars on the maxillary. So I have already went in and removed these six teeth in the dental chart by highlighting the teeth, going down to the condition drop bar, and selecting missing tooth. Once that is done, you can X out of your dental chart. It will ask you if you want to save. You're going to click yes, and then you're ready to go to your period chart. You'll notice once I open the perio chart, all the teeth that I have marked missing are now red. And so EagleSoft will automatically skip over these teeth. If you accidentally forget to remove the teeth first, then EagleSoft is gonna default and start with the distal buckle of number one, as it assumes that this patient has all 32 teeth. So be very mindful about making sure that you remove all the missing teeth first, or you could get completely off on your probe chart. Also notice the process here. This is the sequence in which you're going to probe. It does have a drop-down menu that offers you a few more um, options, but this is the most common. Uh, we do not let you customize EagleSoft to go in any other sequence other than what is already pre-selected. You're going to want to make sure that you have the probe depth button selected. If you get off, then you could easily type in all your numbers on the wrong line. The PD is for probe depth. We have GM for gingival margin. When you're documenting recession or enlargement, you'll click the gingival margin button. FG is for furcation grade, mobility, and mucogingival junction. We are gonna start off with just some simple probe depths um, to get started in the program. So I'm gonna tap in some numbers. In order to tell exactly where you're at, uh, the program highlights the entire tooth with a red box around it, and then the exact location with the little blue box. I'm gonna go all the way across the facial. Notice that it is skipping the teeth that um, I have taken out in EagleSoft. Also notice that any number over three is red, and that's so it will bring your attention to those areas that have greater attachment loss or maybe there's a little inflammation where the gingival margin is above the gum line. So this is how to tap in just probe depths. As you are probing along, it's important to document the bleeding, whether it's spontaneous upon probing or whether it's delayed. So if it's delayed, you can go back, select the areas that you had bleeding, and put in the bleeding spots. If you're doing it as you go, you can type in the number and type in the bleeding spot as well. There is a shortcut for that, and you have to do um, the shortcut letter prior to typing in the number. So if you look at the word bleeding, and honestly, it's super hard to even tell on this word, but the letter G is underlined. And so the shortcut for bleeding would be G and then the number. So I'm going to come down here. If I do G7, it will automatically do the bleeding point in that tooth. So if someone else is typing this in for you, it would be um, efficient to say, okay, G6, G7, G whatever. Um, to get the bleeding spots in there as you go. That's just a shortcut, or you can click the actual bleeding button. For separation, if there's actual pus that comes out of the pocket, you will notice that turns the little box yellow. So I can click the button and 
put it in there, or the R is underlined, I can do R and the number. If the patient has both bleeding and separation, let's say we have an eight millimeter pocket here, and the patient has both, I can get bleeding and separation, and then it turns it a dark purple. So when all of this is complete, I should be able to tell exactly which areas were bleeding, had separation, or a combination of both. As a shortcut, you can also click the G and the R at the same time with the number, G, R, 8, and it'll take, it'll put that in there as well as a shortcut. If the patient has bleeding everywhere, you can click, click bleeding and all, and it will put bleeding spots everywhere, or you can take them back off. And now I'm just going to put a few more bleeding spots in there just so we can see what that looks like. After all the probe depths are done, you will want to go back and measure recession. I do not recommend doing the recession at the same time as probing because it's very easy to um, forget to click back on the PD button and then you will record all your actual probe depths as gingival margin and you would have to go back and retop it. So it's just more efficient to do all the probe depth readings along with bleeding and separation all at the same time, and then go back and do the gingival margin. So now on our maxillary, I'm gonna click gingival margin, and we're gonna say this patient has some recession right in the middle facial of number six. We'll say they've got two millimeters. Same thing on 11, we have a hard pressure. Um, do some in here, we'll say 13 has a little recession around the whole tooth. Okay, what I want you to look at with this number, let's tap on number 13 where I put recession around the entire tooth. Notice that the PD, the probe depth here on the side is three. I've put in the gingival margin as recession as a 131, and that changed the clinical attachment level to 464. So visualize the actual tooth, where the CEJ is, where the gingival margin is, and where the epithelial attachment is. EagleSoft automatically calculates the clinical attachment loss for you. No matter what, clinical attachment loss is always CEJ down to epithelial attachment. Doesn't matter where the gingival margin is. I'm going to say that one more time. Clinical attachment loss or level is always equal to CEJ to epithelial attachment. So in the case of this number 13, my probe depth is 3. What that means is that the gingival margin down to the epithelial attachment is three millimeters. But then on the facial, the patient also has three millimeters of recession. So I know by looking at this that the gingival margin is three millimeters below the CEJ. And since the attachment level should be CEJ to epithelial attachment, then my attachment loss is actually six. Now in healthy tissue, the gingival margin is often one to two millimeters above the CEJ. We do not make you go in and subtract that difference to bring Cal zero. Um, we just know that this would be considered healthy. Also, if a tooth does not have any recession, you do not have to click zeros. If it is blank, um, that's, that indicates zero. We don't make you go in and subtract um, when there's inflammation unless it's um, pretty severe, but if a patient has gingival enlargement, say due to a medication and it's, you're getting really high readings, we'll say we have, we can do here on the facial. Let's see, we've got nine, seven, nine. We'll look at just one tooth here. But then maybe the lingual's fine. Um, but we know that that's not actually the probe depth. Let me go back and pick that up. We can do having some hot probe depths here. So we're going to say we have 777 probe depth on the facial of 8, but this patient has gingival enlargement. So we know, even by looking at the radiographs, the bone level here actually is pretty good. This patient does not have 7 millimeters of attachment loss. That gingival margin is well above the CEJ. 
So what you want to do is take your probe and gently slide down into the sulcus and feel where the CEJ is and take that measurement. So when you do that, and this gets a little complicated, but enlargement is documented under gingival margin as negative recession. So just think of it as being the opposite. It's above the gingival margin. So I'm going to click the negative button and say I measure down and I feel like I feel the CEJ about four millimeters down. Negative four. And on this one, I feel it about three millimeters down. So you'll notice that it automatically calculated your attachment loss again. Because remember that attachment level is equal to CEJ down to epithelial attachment. So I've got my probe depth, but my gingival margin is well above the CEJ. So to get the measurement strictly from CEJ to epithelial attachment, I have to subtract the enlargement. So EagleSoft automatically does that for you. When I'm looking at this probe chart, if the numbers are crossed out, then I know those are negative numbers. And you can see it brought the attachment level to 433 instead of 777. If a patient has mobility on a tooth, then you'll click the mobility tab and it gives you selections 0 through 4 as those are your only options on mobility grade. For cation grade, it also gives you options zero through four, and you would select the actual for cation location. I don't know if you can tell that these are highlighted in blue, and then notice on the anterior teeth that it's not an option. It went back to um, probe depth. You can only select for cation grade on a tooth that actually has a furca. So see, when I click on an anterior tooth, it, that option goes away. Mucogingival junction, we do not require you to um, measure. When um, you are seeing your patient back um, at their recare, say it's a perio patient, you're seeing this patient every three months, the comparison option allows you to pull up all the probe charts this patient has ever had, and it gives you the numerical value so you can see progress. You can also do a perio graph, which shows the progress in line. Uh, in line. You can, um, this is a great visual for patients, honestly, to show the red and the green and places they need to work on. And you can select what you want it to actually show. And then there's a comparison graph where you can select the dates that you want it to show. Um, you will want to save your exam and then you are good to go. So I'm gonna kind of do this again and show you what a completed um, probe chart will look like. Again, I've removed the teeth that are missing. I'm going to click my perio tab. I have a blank chart. Um, patient will be in supine position, all the light, the mirror, the patient positioning and clinician positioning, let's say are correct. And then you're going to begin typing. So look at the sequence. We're starting distal buckle number two and moving towards the midline. And we're going to go in the sequence in which EagleSoft is pre-programmed. Let's say this patient is pretty healthy. I can see we had some bleeding here, bleeding here. And by putting in the bleeding, I'm doing G5, G5, G6, or I can clap, uh, click the bleeding tab. and then it's automatically gonna drop down to the mandibular. To do recession, quick recap, click your area, gingival margin, and how many millimeters of recession or inflammation by clicking the negative button and then clicking the number. And that will add in the enlargement. That is how you will do your periodontal charting in EagleSoft.